In this video, I will show you how to complete Blast from the command line. If you don't have a lot of experience with command line, I recommend that you check out our intro to command line video, tutorial, and assignment. You also need to already have Blast installed, which is covered in our setup instructions video. So we will first start by opening our command line and making it bigger. You can make sure that you have Blast installed by typing Blast N for nucleotide blast. And you'll see this error showing that it found the BLAST command, but that you did not provide it with the database or sequences, so it did not actually complete BLAST. The sequences and database we're going to be working with can be found on our GitHub. So go to GitHub and search for aduce-ubc. Go to the users. Here we see our homepage and you're going to be working with data from the Micro 301 course. You should download all of the files as one zipped folder and place it unzipped within your Module 1 directory, like so. Thus, if we move into our Module 1 directory, you should have a number of still zipped files as well as a FASTA sequence file and some metadata text files. Just leave this here so you can get oriented to how your data should be. If you'd like more information on this data and the databases, please see below. The first thing we need to do is unpack the Microbial 16S database, which is still zipped. To do this, we can use the unzip command on our zip file. We see here that it has pulled out a number of database files and placed them in a 16s microbial folder. You'll then want to move everything out of this folder into the one you're currently in since we don't want to have to be directing all of our commands into subdirectories making them unnecessarily long. So we will move everything from the 16s microbial folder into our current directory. So now you see all of your 16s database files and then the FASTA file which contains the sequences. There are some additional files in here like abundance file and a metadata file which are not necessary for this particular video. So the first thing we're going to do before completing BLAST is to look at our data. Our sequence data is contained in this Sanich OTU rep FASTA, meaning that there is one representative sequence for each OTU, or operational taxonomic unit, which in our case is a proxy for microbial species. You can look at the first couple of lines of this using head. Of this FASTA file, and we hit enter. And if we scroll up a little, we see that what we have is an arrow followed by the name of the OTU, which they're just numbered one, two, however many there are, and then the sequence for that given OTU. Because we asked for head, it's showing us the first 10 lines. It's hard to see because it soft wraps the sequence around, but if you were to zoom out a whole bunch, you would see that actually each line is either a name or a sequence all on one line. So let's zoom back in there. You could also look at the end to see how many OTUs there were in total by using tail, which will show you the last 10 lines, which we see here that we have OTU 4,364 to 4,368. So we know that there are over 4,000 OTUs in this file. The reason we're exploring BLAST via command line is because there are so many sequences, over 4,000. This means that if you were to go to BLAST online, our nucleotide blast since we're working with DNA sequences, the amount of time it would take you to insert each sequence or all of them into here and blast them against the entire 
database is a lot longer than it takes via command line. And in comparison, this is a relatively small 16S dataset at over 4,000 sequences. Many are looking at millions, or if you're using metagenomics, even billions of sequences. So that's why we want to use command line to make it faster and easier. But in order to keep this video a little bit shorter, we're actually going to not blast all the sequences right now. We're going to use awk, A-W-K, to subset the sequences to just the first 10. We can do this with awk, and then giving it the parameters of where to start, so 1, and then where to end, 20. Now remember, each sequence has two lines, one for the name, one for the actual sequence, which is why if we want the first 10 OTUs, we need to use 20 lines. And then we would run this on our FASTA file. And it just prints it out in the console here. If we scroll up, we see we have OTU1 through OTU10. Actually, I will just use the up arrow so that you can see this command more easily if you need to type it in. Now this just prints this to the console, so we actually want to save this somewhere. So we want to use exactly the same command, which remember, from our intro tutorial, you can just use the up arrow to get to, and we're going to save it into myseeks.fasta. So just saving it into another file. You can see that we've made this file. Here. And this will contain just the first 10 sequences so that our first try at blast runs really quickly. So that means that we have everything we need to blast. We have our sequences and all of our database files, which will be 16S files. To run blast, we're going to use nucleotide blast, so blast n, and then give it a number of parameters. Tell it that our query sequences are myseeks, that our database, db, is the 16S microbial database, and that we want to save our output, so out, to a file called myseeks blast. And we'll just save it as a text file. We've seen in previous commands, like list here, that the dash is used to designate options on commands. So our command is blast n, but then we have the options of telling it query, database, and an output file name. Now these don't have to be in this order. We could specify the database, and then the query, and then the out. But it's important that the file name after each one is what it is. So the query is followed by the name of the query sequences, the DB database is followed by the name of the database, and so forth. So we can run this. Because it's very few sequences, it'll run relatively quickly. And we can see that we've created our output myseeks.blast. Just like with our original sequence file, we can look at the very top of this, but we're going to actually want to see more than just the first couple of lines. We want to see a few more. So we're going to say, I want to see the first 50 lines of the blast output. So now we can designate again with the dash an option that we want to see actually 50 lines. And that'll print it out here. So if we scroll up, here's our command. We see that it gives us very similar BLAST output to what you would see on the online tool. It tells you the version of BLAST, as well as gives a reference for the BLAST algorithm. It tells you your database, how big the database was, and then tells you your sequence. So for query number one, which is the OTU one, it's 302 base pairs long. And you will see, so this is the command here. And you'll see it gives you a number of blast hits. So, methylobacter seems to be our best hit here. If you want to learn more about how to designate the best hit and what to do when you have multiple best hits, please see our blast assignment documentation. You'll see that even though we gave it a full 50 lines, you only get some information for the first OTU. This is because it's giving you every good blast hit, which can be hundreds. So, if we use the up arrow to go back to our blast function, bring it a little bit higher here, 
we actually want to do is add another couple parameters. We want to first change our output so we're not overriding what we did before. Now we're going to call it Blast Simple. And we're going to give it the other options of the number of descriptions. Our one. And then the number of alignments is one. So this is just telling it only tell me the top single hit for each OTU. So now if we look at the first 50 lines of our simple output, we see that it just gives us this first top one and then we can see more information that we couldn't see before because we had run out of lines. And we actually see the physical alignment in between these two sequences. And this is the alignment that in turn gives us this score in eValue to let us know how similar our sequences are to this methylbacter that are in the database. So that's how you complete nucleotide blast from the command line. See here, this is our main function that we would use in command line to repeat this, changing out what your sequences are. So you could put the full sandwich FASTA here and have it run for a while. What you want to name your output can also be changed. And you probably don't want to just look at one description and one alignment because it's very possible that the one right below it has identical score and just happens to be listed second. So you always want to check out at least a couple to make sure you're getting the best possible identification based on BLAST. Now to test yourself, we encourage you to play with awk, let's show it here, play with awk to make different sequence files of not just the 1 through 20, so the first 10 OTUs, but middle or the end, whichever you want, and then try it out in Blast with different names to make sure that you know the different pieces. As always, when we're done, we want to exit our session and then close out. And please check out our website for our other data science tutorials and videos.